Hi, I'm Fred Armisen, and you're watching Consequence. You're in London, London right now shooting what? Um, we're working on a new season of documentary now. Oh, great. So you're shooting, you're shooting in London then? Uh, all, all over Britain. Oh, cool. So Wales, Manchester, all over the place. That's exciting. Uh, yeah. is it, was there beyond like the documentaries that you plan on approaching for this for the season? Is there was there another reason to shoot all in England? There were like some actors who are working out of here that it kind of like made sense for us to shoot here. Mm -hmm. And little by little, it just because we we like to shoot in different countries. It turns out it just makes it look better. Mm -hmm. So um, little by little, things came together that were like, it looks like it's going to be England and Wales. So it just turned out that way. That's great. So all, 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 all six episodes? I think it's six. It, you know, the show barely, we barely have it together. We just kind of, it's sometimes it's six, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. We, we, it's always very last minute. Like we sort of throw things together via email. Mm -hmm. um, and it somehow works. Every season we've done has been like this. It's just complete chaos. And I think for some reason, the chaos makes it feel more like a documentary. I almost feel like we do it uh, on, on purpose without, or, you know, without realizing it. Of course. Are you going to be more on camera for on camera for this season of documentary now? Because I know season no. three like was a little tougher. A little season three was tougher, but somehow this turned out where I'm also not on camera as much. I'm in maybe three episodes or something like that. But I was away shooting something else, so I wasn't able to. I was in Romania working, so I couldn't couldn't do them all. So this to me was like, oh, I could do some of it you know, and, and help with the writing and, uh, and producing part of it. But I, I'm, although I have to say, I think it's another thing we kind of like, like if it's not, if it doesn't look too much like a TV show, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like, it, I, the goal always was for it to look convincing, to be, for someone to happen on it by mistake and to go, I think this is a real documentary. So I don't mind, you know, not not being in it all the time. Of course. I mean, yeah. that is like, I think probably the aspect that takes people out of it the most is like, wait, isn't that w Owen Wilson in that? Yeah, it, it's a weird thing. And all of a sudden you kind of also can tell, or I know with me with like acting, there's like a certain style of fake documentary acting even mm -hmm. where, you know, people are just, people have seen so much stuff more and more that they're, you know, they're good at watching stuff. And they're like, if something doesn't ring true, it's not going to be as effective. And I, I really do want the show to be effective. I, I really do want someone to mistake it for the real thing. That's awesome. Uh, before, before I move on to the bubble, I am curious, uh, is, so is it, is it you and Seth and is Bill on set for the season? No, but he's a, he's a producer and a creator and writer on it anyway, but he's, sure. he's working on Barry. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. it feels like it feels like that show's been the biggest thing pulling him away yes because also we're also dealing with you know everyone had to shut down because of covid so he couldn't shoot mm -hmm. uh, you know the stuff that i was working on i couldn't do so we're, we're just making up for it you know absolutely so so and now that everything's starting up again as soon as documentary now started you know i i couldn't get here quickly enough bill can't even make it here but it we're all in touch about it, mm -hmm. you know, of with course. a good text thread going. Excellent. Uh, well, I mean, this is this does segue us nicely to the bubble. I'm curious, how did uh, you initially get involved with this? Judd just asked me. Mm -hmm. um, and I know it sounds really name dropping just to say Judd just asked me, but he did. I, I just see him in L.A. and we're sort of in this. I've known him for a while. We're in the same circles of comedians. And he told me this idea. And as soon as he pitched it, even though I would do anything for him, I would be in, in whatever he wrote, but he pitched it. He's like, how about this for an idea? 
And, you know, he, the premise of, of the movie being that because of the pandemic, the actors can't escape from the movie. The, the horror movies, that, that not that they can't escape from an island, but from being in a movie. And, oh, I thought it was so brilliant. So I was like, oh, that sounds great. And then he didn't tell me what role. He's like, I don't know what you could be in it. Maybe you could do something fun. He went through all the roles and he said the director, you know, like mm-hmm. there's a role for a director. I didn't say anything, but in my head, I was like, oh man, I hope he picks me for that. And then he did. And then all the news just got better and better. You know, we're shooting in England. I love England so much. I was like, yeah, everything he said, I was like, absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. And then the idea was that the director for this franchise is like an indie director. Mm -hmm. So, you know, someone who's inexperienced with a a big, whatever, a blockbuster movie, you Mm -hmm. know. A big studio movie so you know so that's that's how it all came about so that was all just like phone calls and stuff that's wonderful um i'm glad that i'm glad that he somehow sensed your psychic energy about what role you really wanted i'm so glad too because i didn't want to push it because you know when, when you push stuff it's kind of like who wants that you know like hey let me be that guy i was just like i re- remember really like holding my tongue and just being like hey great whatever works, whatever you need me for, I'll, I'll be there. Well, I mean, as you mentioned, the character's backstory does bear some resemblance to Colin Trevorrow's. Were you thinking much about that as an inspiration point? Mm, no, I tried to like keep it a little blank mm-hmm. because then if I'm like, I don't know, if I'm being too much of like one person who really exists, then I'm kind of doing it. I don't know. It's almost like I, I start doing like an impression or something. And I wanted it to be like a mix of different people and then just like my, my version of what I think a director would be. Well, it's, it's such a, it's such a fun performance for you too, just because I feel like, you know, I'm, I feel like m- like most comedy fans, I'm very always delighted, but always pretty, you know, expecting you to show up in a role where it's like a small, smaller, goofier part. And this was very much, yeah. much more central. And, you know, you have a, like a really clear focus. So it was really exciting to see you get to play something like that. Well, thanks. I feel like it, I feel like I'm at my best when I do like little appearances. And this felt like a bunch of little appearances because their cast is so big. Right. So it was a good mix of central, but also it's just little, you know, bursts of what I like to do. But it's really weird. Like over the years, I've sort of it's taken, you know, I've just sort of figured out that I just feel better when it's something. I don't know, three scenes or something. I'm, I'm always like, I, I'm good, you know? Is it, do you feel like it's just, I mean, what, what is it about that for you? I don't know. It's like some sort of chemistry or something where that, like, that's where I'm most comfortable. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's like the way I talk or something or, the, you know, but for some reason, uh, that's what sits, that, that's what I like best. Well, I mean, I I feel like you have a little experience with sketch, like a little time. You've put a little time into that area, which so that could just be a natural extension of that. Definitely, because with sketches, other people, you know, so many other people in in the sketch and uh, the sketch is bigger than just, you know, the performer, like it's it's the premise and stuff. So something in there. But um, yeah, it's just I don't know. That's just how, how. how I like to do it. And, and I sometimes will think back to um, people I, I admire, you mm-hmm. know, and I'll think like, well, I like how Jane Lynch is in stuff. I like her appearance and things. And then also like Michael Palin, I like when he appears in stuff. And um, so I don't know, somewhere in there, I feel like is a, is a good zone or whatever. Cool. Uh, you know, talk to me about what it was like you know, coming together, you know, for this, like, you know, how, I guess the question really is how meta did this all end up feeling? Incredibly, because this is 2021 Mm -hmm. pre-vaccine. I think people in England were getting them, but I didn't, I wasn't vaccinated yet. So it was still scary. And then we had all these rules in place for this movie about having rules. So every day, you know, there was like, everyone was masked in a very intense way. And there was a lot of protocol without the um, safety zone of, um, well, I'm vaxxed. There was none of that. It was very, 
I hope this works out. So it was really, it was every day was exactly like the movie. Mm -hmm. And the other thing also was it's a, you know, it's a comedy and it's about these, you know, CGI dinosaurs. At the same time, it had to be explained to me over and over that, okay, this is where the CGI dinosaur is coming down to eat somebody. So it's a joke, but then on top of that, I still had to picture, you know, whatever creature was flying down or whatever. So yeah, it was, every day was, was pretty meta. Every, all the joys of making a Jurassic Park movie without actually making a Jurassic Park movie. Yes, it was so many different layers, you know? And then I had to remember to also, it's weird to have a director on set and then I play the director. So we would laugh about it, but it was really weird to hear action. And then my scene would start with me saying action. <laughs> Which you, you would think I'd be prepared for it. You would think that like, uh, this is easy, I, I get it. But it actually is, I've heard action so much in my life that to hear it actually does put me in a, you know, in a different place. So to hear it, I don't want to be saying action, you know? I imagine. Uh, did you find yourself like mimicking or echoing Judd at any point? Yes. Just because I, I tried to interview him, you know, and ask him real questions. I think, I wonder if he thought I was doing a bit, but I kind of was really asking him, like, what do you do? What do you do with actors when an actor doesn't want to do something? Mm -hmm. Like if an actor's kind of like, how do you manage that? And I don't think he realized I was really asking him what he really does. But um, yeah, I did. Except, you know, he's really laid back. He's very, very casual. Mm -hmm. With scenes, he doesn't even think, he doesn't think in terms of, no, I'm looking for this one thing and we got to get it. There's a lot of, um, oh, I think we got it. That's the, the gist of what the, this joke is. So I think we're good. He's, so he's very laid back and I tried to not be as laid back when I was. Yeah, I mean, I feel like laid back doesn't necessarily fit with the vibe of the, of the vibe that the character kind of is meant to embody. No, no. He's, he, he pretends to be cool, but he's uptight. Yeah. One thing that I feel like I wasn't necessarily expecting going into this was how much dancing would be involved. Uh, was that something yeah. you prepared for? No, and we had to take dance lessons and stuff anyway, which is really good. Um, and for a moment, I thought, boy, this is a lot of dance rehearsal. But on the other hand, when you watch something, sometimes you can tell that they haven't really rehearsed it. Mm -hmm. And it takes you out a little bit. I think seeing that we looked rehearsed made it seem like we'd been in quarantine for a while. It's a subtle thing, but it really helped. I mean, it makes sense just in terms of reflecting, you know, that was a thing that kept a lot of people entertained uh, over the course of the yeah. pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. And that's also like, it, I can't believe I'm using this expression, but it's also like reflects like youth culture. You know what I mean? So like, it's so much about that, that I, we had to like respect how, you know, how much space that takes up. Mm -hmm. I, I, we couldn't be like, oh, whatever. It's just some dumb dance. We had to sort of, you know, treat it, it with, with respect. No, of course. Uh, in terms of, in terms of like working with the cast was how, I hate asking about how, you know, about improv, just because I feel like, you know, you don't want to say the writers did nothing on the project, but, you know, was there, was there a fair amount of improv in, in making this? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's encouraged. And not in the way of like being absurdist. It mm -hmm. wasn't like make this into like a, a scene that doesn't make any sense. It's just, the, you know, at first everyone's kind of shy and then everyone starts kind of opening up a little bit and then you hear these little things and Keegan, you know, he plays this part of like a sort of gung ho actor. Mm -hmm. So he's like really into everything. And we had this scene that was like a press conference, right? And he was being so like, th there's this fake journalist asking him questions and he's being like overly nice, you know? Mm -hmm. Like trying to create inside jokes and laughing way too hard. And it wasn't on the script, mm -hmm. but it really made me laugh just because it, it like his tone was so, 
it was so loud. He was so loud. And like, he was like trying to like make even this press conference, like a, a sports event. Mm-hmm. And it was so funny. So it's things like that, that you can't, um, that aren't uh, like um, prove that you're funny. It's not that it was more, you know, be, be really be your character. And that's what, that's what Keegan was doing. It was, I mean, everyone was great. And also a lot of new people in my life, right? I mean, British comedians I'd never worked with before. And that was great. So as opposed to people I already know, it's like when it's a new person doing their, like, you know, making up their lines and they're really good and subtle. That was fantastic. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to put you on the spot and like make you pick favorites, but were there cast members you were really surprised by and either like, Oh, go ahead. No, I, I, that what I would say is like an even, because if I think of every single actor on it, I, I feel like it was like, everyone was a virtuoso. Everyone had something that they said that uh, I really think made the scene. So I wish I could pick a favorite. It <laughs> sounds like I'm just trying to be nice, but I'm telling you, there were all, everyone just killed it. Of course. Have you gotten to see the completed film? I saw like a long version of it. Oh, wow. Like maybe like two edits before the final edit. Cool. Were you, were you being asked to watch it just like to give notes? Yeah, but I don't know. Like, yes, but I think it was more to feel included. You oh. know, like Judd. I think just likes a feeling of like, let's make something together. Mm-hmm. So any note that I had, I was kind of like just repeating anything they were saying in the room anyway. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're, so, they're like, this could be cut down a little. And I'd, I'd say, yeah, it could be cut down a little. And that was my big grand note, you know? Because also like, what do I know? You know, like I've never made a movie. So when all these like professional editors and Judd is in the room, what, what can I really say? Like, oh, this is a funny scene. This is great. I'm glad you picked that, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, I feel like I feel like with a movie like this, the largely largely the battle is just cutting it down. Yes. Um, Although Judd was kind of explaining to me that, like, the idea of things being really short isn't the same anymore because... Mm -hmm people watch things over time, you know, they sort of pause it and they'll watch something, the rest of it later. So there's less of a like, hey, this is half an hour, we got it, you know, let's really get to it. This can linger a little bit because people just kind of, I guess, I, from what I'm told, watch things a little differently. I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I feel like there is such an interesting aspect of this film, which is that, you know, during the pandemic, we spent a lot of time, and I, I use we in the sense of like the entertainment industry, uh, yeah. spent a lot of time saying stories are important. Stories are what are, what are going to get us through this. Stories are what are keeping us going during this period. And I feel like there's there's an element of the bubble which believes in that. And I feel like there's an element of the bubble which is almost kind of interrogating that, like how true that might really be. Yes. I think that was like, um, that was a kind of a joke of the whole thing. And that that being that, sometimes you know movies tend to be like you know we're gonna save everybody you know like entertainment to the rescue and i do believe in entertainment I, i'm not a snob about that but i think this was a little bit about i think there were even some lines that i had that were about like hey i know it's a pandemic but we're gonna make things better you know some i can't remember what the line was but there was a sense of like we're coming to the rescue. You know, it's like, it's making fun of the idea that yes, everybody needs stories, but you know, should it be at the detriment? I, I'm, not make, I'm not making this comment. I'm just saying that like in general, there was like the, that was kind of the joke. Like we, we need movies, that kind of thing. Of course. And at the same time, like, you know, even if, even if the movie is saying maybe we don't need it, this movie still exists. People, you guys still went out and made a movie during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I remember, it's at the end. I don't know if he kept it in, but I think way at the end, I think I have a line, I don't know if it's over the credits, that's kind of like, well, we did our best, you know, with what we had. I, you know, I know this isn't gonna solve, the, there's, the, there's some kind of a thing like that. I think, that, yeah. 
right? Isn't there something? Yeah. I don't know if he kept it in, but it was like a, a nod to that that idea. And it is, yeah. It, and sure, you're right. I mean, and we did go there, risked our health, you know, and and did it anyway. But I mean, I'm glad. Yeah. But uh, yeah. No, I mean, do you feel like there's sequel potential in this idea? Um. I'm going to say, I hope, I hope not. And then I hope the pandemic doesn't keep, you know, <laughs> resurfacing <laughs> we've got to like, you know, but uh, the idea of not being able to escape a movie is so brilliant to me. So I hope that there's another way, another reason that's not virus related that uh, we could find a way to have something like, you know, how do you escape from a movie? Or maybe there's a movie about a play or something where mm-hmm. they just can't leave the theater or something. I don't know. I just, but I, I love that idea. And would you, you, you'd be open to re, re, revisiting this character or would you want to play? Oh, absolutely, yes. And, uh, and I, you know, I'd want to do anything with Judd, any, with any of the people in the cast. Wait, you, you know, you saw the movie, those guys, everyone's brilliant. Oh yeah. Funny. And a lot of like, who's that? Like, people I'd never seen before and I, I'm just endlessly curious about them you know yeah uh before I let you go I I'm I am curious I've heard rumors that this movie is directly inspired by the making of Jurassic World Dominion and I was curious if you if you had a sense of that if that was something that rang true at all to you um I'm not familiar with that franchise you know, I'm in Europe, so I just know European things. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, so, I should feel better than the so my, questions. Yeah. My, my point of reference is, you know, French film, Belgian films, if you want to get into that. But the American market, I just. No. I, I'm not familiar with it. 